Greetings, cadets, and welcome to another lecture for MS-200. We're going to be talking about area of operations and the area of interest. All right, first, let's talk about the area of operations. Now, here's our doctrinal definition of what the AO is. All right, you can all read that. What I want to highlight is that it gets defined by the commander. All right, that's who decides where the area of operations is. So for a platoon leader, your company commander gives you your AO. All right. It's all bounded by uh, the control features that he gives you. Your, your unit sector really is what it is. <clears throat> and the key part about it is it's got to be an area where you accomplish your mission. All right. This is where we operate. We're going to stay inside those boundary lines. That's what the AO is. When you brief your area of operations, we want you to use a four-step process. Orient, box, trace, and familiarize. So orient means orient everybody to your train model or your map. Here is the north side of the map. All right. To the south, we have New York City to, and the Bear Mountain Bridge and Bear Mountain uh, itself. To the north, there's the Newburgh Beacon Bridge, the city of Newburgh. Um, to the west, we have the Woodbury Commons. And to the east, we've got uh, the Hudson River and everything on the other side of it. All right. That would be an example. All right, box. You want to lay out your AO boundaries. So, for instance, if we're in AO Madison here, we might mention uh, just the grid lines that bound our AO. So, for instance, we're going from the 7-9 to the 8-4 grid lines east to west. And, um, well, I can't read these numbers, but if I was prepared, we'd have, you know, something like the uh, 60 to the 65 or whatever they might be. All right, that just boxes out where our AO boundary is on the graphic, and you can lay that out. Next, we're going to trace. So trace all those major linear features, okay? If there's any major roads, so here's the New York State Thruway, here's the Hudson River, um, if there's any routes that are laid out. Now, you want to trace your roads before your routes because your routes are usually along roads, all right? But anything that's a linear feature or if you have phase lines, lay those out and show where they are. And last thing is to familiarize, which gets people oriented to the major train features that might be in your area. So, um, you know, here's Black Cat Mountain, here's Stillwater Lake, here's the Hudson River, here's the main post area. Um, if there's any towers in the area, things that people can see or things that people are familiar with from working in the area, just point those out to give them an idea of where on the train board they are. And that's how you orient everyone to the train model. In the battle book, you have a sheet that takes you through those to remind you what they are to orient, box, trace, familiarize to the AO. And then uh, when you're briefing, you also want to mention where are your friendly locations on that map. The area of interest is defined here. This is something different than the AO. All right? It's larger than the AO. The key points about this is that it's the area that's occupied by enemy forces, not necessarily by you, who could jeopardize the accomplishment of your mission. So where are the enemy that could have an impact uh, and stop you from doing your mission? It may not be in your AO. There may be a mortar team across a boundary line in your adjacent unit's AO, but they can put fires on you and disrupt your mission. So that's part of your area of interest. All right, to consider the area of interest, we've got three steps you want to consider that. C-A-R. All right, first one is CAS, close air support. Some things you want to think about that. What are the enemy's capabilities for air? Where are they located? What triggers might the enemy have for releasing those air assets? How are they going to deliver it to you? Where are their avenues of approach to get to you? And how much time do they have on station, right? So if they've got uh, helicopters that have to fly from a long distance, they might not have a lot of fuel for loitering around in your area, so they might have not have much time to interact with you. Or they might be nearby and they could spend your entire mission time um, in your AO. Artillery uh, is the next one for A. And you got to think about things like that, like, again, where are they located? What artillery capabilities do they have? When might they use them? And how could they deliver it to you and get, it, get that enemy artillery on your position? Last one is the enemy reserves. All right, what other force do they have besides the main force that you're fighting that could get committed into the battle? 
right? What capabilities do they bring? Where are they? How long will it take them to get there? How might they approach you? And when might the enemy want to commit those reserves and send them to come fight against you? We've got a sheet in the battle book that uh, will help guide you through that. So you can fill that out and make sure you don't forget anything if you're using the course battle book. All right, to close out this lesson, I wanna give you a little practical exercise, something that you can do yourself as a check on learning. Let's imagine that your unit's located here in AO Fresno conducting your mission. All right, now here are some enemy forces. There's an attack helicopter company on the other side of the Hudson River. You've got a mechanized infantry platoon located just south of uh, the Bear Mountain Circle. And there's enemy mortars located up on the top of Bear Mountain. Now, what ways could they have an impact on your mission? How are they in your area of interest? So go ahead and try and work through that part of the battle book and see what you come up with. All right, we'll see you in class. Have a great day.